Good morning, Marriage Enrichment Group. So uh, as we progress through our lessons, we've finished up with the four horsemen, and uh, now we're getting into the rest of the Sound Relationship House. So first of all, happy Mother's Day to each of you uh, who are mothers. I hope this day is a special day. It looks like the weather is in your favor, praise God. It's going to be a beautiful day. So uh, getting right into the lesson, our next level of the Sound Relationship House, as we're really where the trusses are and the shingles almost, uh, where the roof is being built, uh, it seems a little bit backwards. I know in real houses, we put the roof up first and the, the framing and all that business. But in this Sound Relationship House, the last thing that we're doing on the in inside of it uh, is two things. And one is sharing dreams and visions. Uh, so today I want to talk about what... Uh, life dreams do you have and what are you doing to make them come true so a crucial aspect to any relationship is for the spouse to understand what dreams aspirations uh, what hopes convictions and values that your spouse have and do you share them so what is it we're doing in the relationship to help our spouses obtain those dreams to see their dreams realized to see such work and effort and importance in their life for values or things they're trying to accomplish in their aspirations. What is it that you dream big about? And so as a spouse, I must ask that question for my wife. I must say, hey, what is Robin's dreams? How can I help her get to that point? What can I do to assist in helping her reach her dreams? So, you know, in my particular marriage, uh, or my, or my relationship, we look back and where God's called me to and what he's done for us. And, uh, you know, when God called me into the chaplaincy, it was eight years making. You know, Robin never tried to back out of that. She asked me many times, you know, is, am I sure this is God's calling? But she always supported me. You know, she went the extra mile as a mother uh, to make sure the kids were taken care of, especially when it was late at night and I was having to do homework assignments to midnight or I was staying at class till 10 o'clock at night not being at home. She raised them kids by herself on many a night uh, and many hours. She took the load and she did the work. Why? Well, because she saw my dream. She saw that God had called me. She saw that I was going somewhere. And uh, she sacrificed a lot so that I could reach that uh, goal, fulfill my aspirations. But it was more than that. It was God's calling. And she recognized that as well. And that's important that our spouses recognize God's calling, his aspirations, and direction for our life as well. Now, some of Robin's dreams have always been to teach, uh, you know, school-age kids. Not necessarily as a teacher, but to assist, to be there, to guide special needs children. She's always loved to deal with that. And you know what? Anytime a job opportunity or a resume had to be written, whatever it was she needed or references, I would go the extra mile to make sure she had them. Why? She enjoyed doing that. It was one of her dreams. And now as we look forward to the future, <clears throat> Uh, you know, some of the dreams that we still have, one is to retire from the military in the next uh, nine months, which is uh, exciting, but it's also been a long-term dream that's uh, coming to pass. And uh, I think it's awesome and I'm excited about it, but you know, looking forward, I want 100 acres of land. That's a dream for sure, uh, at a good price, by the way, where I can throw some deer stands on there, a seven acre lake, you know, I dream big, right? Uh, to have all these things in the next phase or career that we're going into. Uh, I watch HGTV quite a lot, and I see them always building their dream homes, right? Uh, it gets a little lofty at times, but they do. They, they build their dream homes. They set money aside. They work together as couples to see these things uh, accomplished. Uh, Robin told me the only thing she's dreaming about is uh, having a chicken coop on that land, having a nice kitchen, having a greenhouse. Oh, the list goes on. Hold on. A pool, a sauna, and a hot tub. Well, you know, that may sound like a lot, and uh, it might be a lot. We'll see how that works out financially in the future. But I want to see her have those things. I want to see those dreams come true. As materialistic as they sound, it really goes to a state of mind and a peace that she has with those things and it's something she's working for and towards. Now, uh, I believe we should all be that invested in each other. 
Why? Because God, when he said he gives us life, he gives it more abundantly. I personally believe that that abundantly is the over uh, and extra things that God gives us in our lives. It is the extra blessings. It is that location. It is that pick of a home. It is the details of our lives that have much meaning and value to us. God's interested, so he does it. He shares our dreams as well. He gives us dreams and visions and callings, but God also shares ours. He said to give us the desires of his heart. He wants to see what we want and know what we desire, and God is always there to uh, help us achieve our aspirations and goals as much as we seek his will uh, and to abide by his will and his kingdom purposes. So looking at that, you know, let's review the sound relationship house because we're just about done building it. As you can see, uh, the walls are built with trust and commitment. The very first lesson we talked about was building love maps. And then we started getting into the shared fondness and admiration. If you'll remember, we talked about how to turn towards your spouse instead of away. Uh, we've talked about positive perspectives. Instead of being a no person and always looking for the negative, we found ways to be positive, have positive statements. Then we got into the four horsemen, which is really the level of the house where we manage conflict. It's accepting your partner's influence. It's dialoguing about problems. And it's practicing uh, self-soothing, as we discussed uh, last week. And then the next level, last two levels, is make life dreams come true, which is basically this week. And then uh, next week will be creating a shared meaning to complete the sound relationship house. So let me ask you a few questions as I come to a close in our lesson today. Have you sat down and asked each other what your individual dreams are? Have you taken time to really hear what your spouse's dreams are? Have you committed to helping your spouse have that dream realized? Have you dreamed together for your shared dream? What is your shared dream as a couple? I know sometimes things get tough and it's hard to see that far or to even remember what our dreams were, especially when conflict is high and we're struggling with managing it. But I encourage you today to fall back on what your shared dreams and meanings of life together mean. What are your aspirations together as a couple? Because if you can put that back in focus, it will help you in managing the conflict that you so often deal with in your relationships. And the scripture I want to leave with you today is Proverbs 13 and 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. When we don't get the things, the aspirations, the dreams don't come true in our lives, uh, if we're not careful, our hearts can become sick. When it's delayed, when God don't answer prayers uh, as fast as we would like him to, or things don't turn out the way that we want them to, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But there's a second half to that scripture. But, there's a but. A dream fulfilled is a tree of life. I love that scripture because I believe God wants to fulfill our dreams. I really do. If our dreams are in line with God's will, if we are living for him, then I trust our dreams will be aligned. Our will will be aligned with his will, and God will see it come to pass. So as you enjoy this Mother's Day Sunday, I pray uh, that you will have a discussion sometime this week. Ask each other what your dreams are, and then ask the question, what can I do to make that dream come true? And then put everything you got into it to see that come to pass for your spouse. And if you'll do this for each other, I know that God can bless you, your marriage, and that you will see those things come to pass in your relationship. God bless you in Jesus' name and until next week.